We also have to drive down the gender pay gap, but also end the idea that certain jobs and certain professions are reserved for one gender, not for the other. And so I organised uh, with Chi and Awuma a very interesting event in, the, in Parliament in the summer, which was uh, of women engineers being invited to Parliament. And I talked to some of the older women who had studied engineering 20 or 30 years ago and said how lonely it was at college or university when they admitted, I want to be an engineer. I said, what do you want to be an engineer for? You're a woman. And they said, well, I want to be an engineer. My mother taught me all of this because she was very keen on science and people learning uh, engineering and all those skills. So you have to start at the beginning in schools, making sure nothing is debarred to the girls as well as the boys. <clears throat> what is your message to the BBC about that? I would sign the letter with them. I think the BBC needs to look very hard at itself. The point you made in the press discussion earlier about the treatment of older women in the BBC is, I think, a very important one. But also, this gender pay gap is appalling. We would insist on a, a, a strong gender pay audit of every organisation, and we'd also look you, at a 20 to 1 ratio between the chief executive and the lowest paid staff in every public sector organisation, and the BBC is very much public sector. The pay ratio might have a big effect on sort of famous actors like Benedict Cumberbatch and people who at the moment BBC licence payers want to see in top level dramas and films made by the BBC. Would the, the 20 to 1 um, pay ratio affect people like that? If he's employed directly by the BBC, yes. If he's employed by somebody else, that's a contractual matter between the BBC and somebody else. But I do think the BBC, which is a wonderful organisation, and I actually support it, I support the mm. renewal of the Charter, um, I think it needs to look at itself, because this, the levels of pay are quite astronomical. The um, pay gap, rather, is astronomical. And do you think that there needs to be more legislation on the pay gap across the, across the piece? Absolutely. We need to have a gender pay audit done in every company. We need strong uh, imposition of equal pay legislation across the piece. There's about a 20% gender pay gap in Britain. But there's also the question of promotion of women. And it's not just at the top level. That gets all the news. The BBC gets all the news. Big companies get all the news. What about those working in, in the National Health mm. Service, those working in local government, those working in small okay. companies where the women know they're being paid less than a man doing more or less equally the same job. That's the area of discrimination that is so serious within our society and often the loss of women's career progression opportunities when they take time out for having children in their late 20s or 30s come back and suddenly find the man they've been working alongside a year before has shot up the scale somewhere else and they're left behind. Deal with the issue of gender pay and inequality and deal with the issues of glass ceilings and discrimination that go with it. It's not just about women in the boardroom, women in Parliament or women councillors. It's also about day-to-day -day life, the way in which women lose out on career opportunities because they've taken a year or two off to have children in their 30s and suddenly find that all the career opportunities they thought were there suddenly disappear. We need very tough legislation to prevent that happening and also in companies we need to end the sort of social network of uh, early evening discussion groups when aspirant candidates with different positions in companies come together who's not there younger women who want to be looking after their children the men should also be at home looking after okay. their children Owen Smith, summarize.